your hand. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. How are you doing? It's not your regular day. No. I can usually set my clock by you. Oh, listen. I'm glad you're here, though. A guy came in last night, sold me his whole collection. A lot of that old pulp mystery stuff you like. Maybe you'd like to take a look before Paul, I put it out. Paul, th there's a book. The Occasional Murderer? Sure. Maggie Hammond. She got an award for that one. Personally, I think her earlier stuff is better, but... Do you have it? Sure. I think I can fix you up. I've got an anthology here, uh, three novels, some short stories. No, no, this is it. Mr. Haynes, the change. Mrs. Tuttle's neighbor found her on the kitchen floor the next morning, shards of thick glass laced through her hair. The force of the blow had knocked her unconscious, at the same time etching a four-inch gash across the top of her scalp. The translucent cover on the overhead light had been as old as the house, more than 70 years, made of a heavy glass no one could afford to use anymore. There was no doubt for the police that the five-foot drop from the ceiling had been fatal. Mrs. Tuttle just happened to be there when the cover decided to fall. Just one of those things, one cop told her neighbor. Bad luck, bad timing, take your pick. The official report called it an accident. What else could it have been? Jeez, I'm sorry, I lost my grip. You okay, Mr. Haynes? Jeffrey, hi. I was just leaving you a note. I tried to call you last night. Oh, yeah, I think my phone is, uh, and something's wrong with it. Well, look, the club's meeting a half an hour later tomorrow night. Marty's wife is out of town again, and he can't get a babysitter till then. I told him you wouldn't mind. Yes, fine. I found some great new stuff on Madeline Smith. I know the group's getting a little tired of her, but I found this book on Victorian murders. There's a whole chapter about her. I think I've got her this time, Jeffrey. I think I can prove she poisoned Emile. Really? See, the judges ruled Emile's diary inadmissible, right? Except by 1857, there was plenty of precedent to allow that kind of evidence. So why the exception in this case? Jeffrey. Uh, sorry. Never mind. You can hear the rest tomorrow night. So how are you? Susan, I think... I think I need to get to work now. Oh, okay. Sure. Thanks. I just really have to. <laughs> Thanks.
Hey, what are you doing? Water department. You got a major leak inside. What? I was checking your outside meter. Flow is way above normal. Must be a busted pipe. Thought I better tell somebody. You want me to help you find it? No, no, it's, it's all right. I'll take care of it. Okay. But you better hurry. Could be looking at some serious damage. What makes you so sure someone's trying to kill you, Mr. Hanks? Well, it started a few weeks ago. L little things around the house. Well, what kind of things? Well, like, like when my toaster oven caught fire. Your toaster oven? Yeah, when I went to use the fire extinguisher, it was empty. But I just bought it. It was brand new. The toaster oven? The, the fire extinguisher. You see, someone made sure that it wouldn't work. Well, maybe it was defective. But, but, but what about the gas line to my stove? It, it was not defective. The repairman said that that the pipe had definitely been pinched. That's why there was a leak. So you think someone purposely pinched a gas line to kill you? There's no other explanation. You know, I moved my stove once to clean behind it, bent the gas line accidentally. I suppose if I pushed a little harder, I could have pinched the pipe, caused a leak. Have you cleaned behind your stove recently, Mr. Haynes? Yes. No, I mean, that's... Look, I hadn't touched the cover on my kitchen light. But it fell. It missed me by inches. I, I could have bled to death. Then I'd say you were lucky. And, and what about the water pipe? This the pipe tonight? Yeah, doesn't it seem strange to you that the pipe burst and the, the, the light wouldn't work and the stair railing snapped all in one night? Let's try it another way. The pipe burst. It happens. Moisture shorts out the light fixture. In your anxiety to find the leak in the darkness, you lean too hard on the railing. Maybe you got dry rot. Maybe it's just getting old. Either way, the weight, the railing snaps. That doesn't sound so strange. I'm telling you that someone is trying to kill me. Then why don't they just go out and buy a gun? What Detective King is trying to say, Mr. Haynes, is your average murderer doesn't go through so much trouble. Frankly, killing someone is a lot simpler than what you've been going through. Well, obviously, they, they want it to look like an accident. What makes you so sure that they're not accidents? Uh, are either of you familiar with Maggie Hammond? Friend of yours. She's a, a mystery writer. In her book, The Occasional Murderer, Mrs. Tuttle is found one morning. Wait a minute. We're talking about a book? A murder mystery, yeah. That you read? Well, how else would I know the story? <laughs> so this Mrs. Tuttle is killed when her kitchen light cover hits her on the head. Just like what almost happened to you. <laughs> exactly. And that's only one example. Everything that happened to me the last few weeks, the, the gas line, the water pipe, it, it's all in the books. Th that's how I know. I can show you. I've read them all. Oh, I'm sure you have. Now you see what I'm up against. Maybe you should spell it out for us, just so there's no confusion. Well, whoever is trying to kill me is using these murder mysteries to do it. Mr. Haynes, try and understand our position. Before we can do anything, we need something a little bit more concrete. Like a motive. That's when we do our best work. I don't know why. I wish I did. But, but, but couldn't you at least file some kind of report or something? Oh, don't worry. Detective Maxwell and I will make sure that everyone knows about this conversation. You think of anything else? Give me a call. Talk. 
In the meantime, try and be a little more careful around the house, huh? <laughs> I will. Yes. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day. This city. It's a shame. Don't you like it? It's just like the one Madeline wore to court every day. Susan. I thought I'd wear it to the meeting tonight. Everyone else does it, but if you think it's too much. No, 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 it's, it's fine. What are you doing? Oh, uh, the, the light. Light's much better over here. You look terrible. Why were you so afraid when you saw me just now? Afraid? No. No, you, you just surprised me. I, I didn't know it was you. Who'd you think it was? Something's wrong. Susan, if... if someone was trying to kill you, do you think you'd know? Depends on how they do it. Well, suppose it was in such a way that everyone would just assume it was an accident. Boring. Been done. A, a household accident. You mean ordinary? Like a fall or an electrocution or something that happens all the time? Well, they'd have to know the victim pretty well. His routine, plus they need access to the house. Okay, okay. Now, uh, suppose the victim figured it out. Uh, suppose he knew that that was their plan. Yeah. Then it's like a cat and mouse thing. All the usual stuff that goes wrong around the house, suddenly it's real suspicious. There's no such thing as an accident is good. What? Because then everyone's a suspect. Friends, family, the plumber. I don't have a plumber. It's your story. Pick whoever you want. What's the motive? I don't know. Well, does the victim have any friends? You know, people he really trusts? Not anymore. Well, if he doesn't trust anyone, then where's the surprise ending? Bring it up at the meeting tonight. They love these scenarios of yours. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> I have to go. What? In other news this evening, Seattle police report that burglaries are on the rise. A spokesman called the report discouraging and warned that the possibility of any crime should be taken seriously. He cautioned residents that unusual activity around your home could mean that you are a target. And now, Back to the music. Detective Maxwell. Je Jeffrey Haynes. Look, there, there's someone in my backyard. 
I, I, I don't know who. I just heard him. Just now. C can you come over? Thanks. Yes. Did you get him? You stepped on your rake. What? No, no. No, that's not possible. Get up, Mr. Haynes. No, I, I, I put it away in the, in the garage. I, I wouldn't leave it lying around. Of course not. Wait a minute. Murder by natural causes. Another book? Yeah, a man is impaled on his own rake. Of course, that's it. Someone put it there. Hey, listen. We've got people with real problems to worry about. We don't have time for your fantasies. Detective, Hey, listen. Please. One more call like this, and I'll arrest you. You got that? Maybe the gardener did it. The idea that I could commit murder is abhorrent. I loved my husband. And he wasn't just my business partner. He was my best friend. You two were messing around. <laughs> that was never proved. You got married two days after he was buried. You used the insurance money to go on a cruise. Yeah, I resent that. Oh, shut up, Bert. We've been talking about you and Eloise for the last three meetings. Where the hell is Jeffrey? He said he was coming. Our case was thrown out of court due to lack of evidence. We know, Eloise. I died a bitter and unhappy man. Guilty conscience. He confessed to me on his deathbed. I did not. Oh, would you two give it a rest? If Jeffrey were here, he'd nail you both for killing the husband. I found some new information about Madeline. Are we through with that? Face it, Eloise. You did it. I want to hear about Madeline. Okay. I told you Emile's diary was ruled inadmissible, right? Except by 1857, there was precedent to allow it as evidence. I, I thought the point was to defend our characters. Would you be quiet? Shh. Why wouldn't the judges allow such vital information? Jeffrey! Mr. Haynes, we were just wondering about you. Afraid something might have happened to me? Things get a little out of hand without you around. Things are out of hand, Marty. Jeffrey, are you okay? A man will be murdered in his home. He doesn't know why or by whom, just that someone wants him dead. There have been attempts already, each made to look like an accident. The murderer's only mistake was to assume the victim would never suspect they weren't accidents. How do you figure it out? Every attempt 
could be found in the pages of the victim's own books. With this knowledge, he decides to turn the tables. Confront the suspect. Exactly. Now, let's see. Maybe it's the woman whose dinner invitations he keeps turning down, who followed him home one night to confront him over this ongoing rejection. An ugly scene. Jeffrey. Or is it the couple who have turned their lives into one long exploration of the criminal mind? who admitted to him once that part of their hobby is to devise the perfect murder, one that could never be discovered. Easy, pal. Jeffrey, what are you doing? What the hell is this? Yeah, then there's the friend whose wife is always out of town on business. The friend who is discovered with another woman one night, quite by accident. Stop right there. When the wife found out about the affair, he assumed the victim had told her. Things were said, nothing specific. I'll kill you. But the threat was clear. Leave me alone. All of you, just leave me alone. Slice of death. Dial M for murder. it. Knock, knock, you're dead. The, the polite assassin. Door-to-door -door killer. Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I know you're in there. I just want to talk to you. I didn't listen before. I will now. I think we need to talk. From the closet. Look at it. It's burned out, that's all. Light bulbs do that. You put in a new one, everything's fine. And with that mess you've got in there, I'm surprised it hasn't buried you before. There were other things. I believe you. You do? Uh-huh. But I also believe in accidents. They do happen. You fall down, bump your head, step on a rake. It's painful. It drives you crazy. 
But it's no reason to accuse people of trying to kill you. Everything I said was true. What about me? I still have a key to your house from when you went on vacation. The kindness of killers. Stop it, Jeffrey. Well, it's, it's there. I read it. What happens in those books is supposed to be possible. The best stories are the ones with twists and turns we believe could actually happen. They did happen. To me. But why? Why you, Jeffrey? In those books, there's a reason for everything. Give me a reason why anyone would do this to you. The people you accused tonight, they're not murderers, Jeffrey. Maybe they've read the books, but that doesn't prove anything. Because it's not the books, Jeffrey. It's how much you've let yourself believe in them. You've turned my life into a murder mystery. And if you don't stop, you'll end up being your own victim. I read too many books. You sure you want to do this, Mr. Haynes? I mean, all your books? I've had enough mystery for one lifetime, Paul. I won't be needing these anymore. I'm sorry to see it. I really am. And you were my favorite customer. Paul, you've got a great place here. You'll have new customers. So there you are. Fair price. I trust you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for uh, everything. You really aren't coming back. Gallery. Stay tuned for the case of the smoking salmon. <laughs>